This is a view from the bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. It's fair to say that you and I probably don't have a life story that is as exciting as our guest this week. Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Please take a moment, especially if you're watching on YouTube, and God bless you if you are, to uh, after sharing and subscribing, to uh, download our free app. Our app gets you all of our video content, not just this program, but our weekly broadcast program, Unraveling Revelation, our weekly Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship, and our podcast, PID Radio, which uh, is what started all of this going back to 2005. You'll also find classic episodes of both PID Radio and A View from the Bunker back in the era before video there at the app, as well as a, a Bible um, calendar of our upcoming events and a reading schedule and a new messaging feature where we can uh, exchange uh, messages back and forth, prayer requests and other things away from the uh, all seeing eye of the uh, gatekeepers of big tech and social media. You'll find a link at vftb.net or better yet, go to our main website, gilberthouse.org slash app, gilberthouse.org slash app. And while you're there, by the way, check out our new streaming video channel, streaming video, gilberthouse.org slash video, where we've got video teachings and a series, uh, streaming video versions of all of our DVDs there as well. So if you're interested perhaps in something that we put out on DVD, but you don't want to pay for shipping and you want to see it in full HD, you can do that there. Gilberthouse.org slash video. Our guest um, met her at several conferences. So I can vouch that she is a rational, um, productive person, successful real estate agent. Uh, just one of the many hats that she's worn in her life. But as you will find out during the course of this conversation, and if you read her book, which will be the subject of our conversation, um, Love and Renewal of the Heart and Mind, uh, she has had a life that's been full of, um, well, I'll let her tell the story. Um, the the Some of the stories almost sound uh, unbelievable, but if I didn't know other people who were likewise believers in Jesus Christ and of sound mind, rational, productive people, people like Josh Peck, Stephen Bankars, uh, the late Russ Dizdar, Shelley Dizdar, and the stories that they tell, um, that, you know, I, I have no reason to doubt that what is in this book is absolutely real. And it should be an encouragement to those who are trying to get away from spiritual encounters that most of us have never had to endure. Uh, we are welcoming to the program for the first time, Barbara Joan Briggs. Uh, Barb, I think it's safe to say that you've lived a life with experiences that most of us only see written about or sometimes depicted in TV or on in, in movies. I mean, uh, it's, it's really remarkable. I, I would not have guessed at your history, having met you at, at various conferences over the years, um, I would not have guessed that you had gone through so much adversity and, uh, well, spiritual warfare, torment, deception uh, along your way to where you were when I first met you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, well, it's all thanks be to the Lord, Jesus Christ, because I would not be where I'm at without the renewing of the mind and and studying his word and, yeah, him healing me. And, yeah, I was in a pretty bad place. <laughs> You're very open in your book. You um, mm -hmm. mentioned right up right up front in the first couple chapters of your book that um, you were really abusing uh, some pretty hard drugs. I mean, uh, using meth on a on a very well on a daily basis, according to your book. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that some people can just never never get away from at all. Um, and between that and uh, the effects that it had on you. I mean, you say you came from a really bad place. I mean, uh, wh how, how, what kind of effect did this have on you? N not just physically, but spiritually. Well, um, I think that I, I, I truly believe that, that any street drugs or even pharmaceutical sorcery drugs, um, bring in a lot of spirits, demonic spirits. Um, they um so i think spiritually i was like opening the door for every spirit and then getting into um you know it, it, which i think created the the mental illness um and i just really messed up my brain and 
and with all the spirits and everything, and then that guided me into the New Age. So I was real open to getting into the occult because of it. So spiritually, it's, it really was damaging. I mean, I made the choice to use meth. You know, it was my choice. I, it was my I mean, I regret it now, but it was it was a choice that I made. So I actually made bad choices and created all of this for myself. So I take the blame for doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the Lord rescued me for sure. <laughs> and and you know, I know a lot of mental uh, patients don't come back from the kind of stuff that I went through, but I did, and so. I'm just really grateful for that. I mean, a lot of my family members and friends did not think I was going to return Mm. to a sane mind. You know, they just didn't. They're like, well, Barb, when I saw you in the hospital, I just didn't. I think we I thought we lost you forever. I just didn't think you were going to come back. So I'm very, very blessed to have a sound mind now. And again, that's something I would not have guessed having met (laughs) you. You know, after I know, we've met a lot of times, and yeah, I was in deep waters, Derek. <laughs> well, just just to give our audience a sense for for how close to the edge or over the edge you were, um, what did this this uh, regular drug use and then this fascination with the supernatural? What kind of stuff did that lead you into? Um, well, basically, mysticism, uh, psychic. Um, uh, Telepathy, I mean, just all kinds of different occult practices, you know, um, guided meditation. Um, It led me into, I was like an open door for different spirits and Ascended Masters, what they call Ascended Masters in in the New Age. And um, before Doreen Virtue was was guided out of the the New Age as well, Mm -hmm. I used to follow her quite a bit. In fact, we knew each other. From one of from um, one of the sites, uh, he thought he was a reincarnation of Saul Paul, and so we had known each other kind of from that site. So, um, but yeah, it just led me down different different occult practices. But I didn't know I was in the occult. I thought it was just spirituality and New Age, and it was beautiful and kind of like um, Joanna uh, Hans, uh, jo- Johansson. Oh, I can't think of her name. Anyway, she did a beautiful side of evil, that book. And it is beautiful. It's like oneness and love and um and so you really get swept away in it and you're like in a different uh mindset. And I had lots of synchronicities. I mean, continual synchronicities and lots of guidance and um I was actually hearing from them. My book will show you that I actually literally heard from the spirits. I mean, there's no if sands or buts about hearing from them because I actually brought like a rose to a mystic and she's like, wow, you're so in tune, you know? And, you know, I was hearing them. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I was reading about that this afternoon and the, the name jumped out at me of the, the mystic because I, uh, uh, I don't know what, 50 years ago now. Yeah. Well, 40 years ago, I, I dated a girl by the same name. Um, Mary, Mary Martin or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> spelled spelled differently so it's not her it's not her uh-huh. but uh you're just like oh well that's interesting um and, and yeah you tell that story about how you were kind of guided to bring her these these gifts and uh, she added it to a shrine that she'd made for isis mary and diana i mean princess diana yeah. mother mary princess mm-hmm. diana and isis but, uh, i don't know if it was necessarily princess diana it could have been like the diana that they used to the pagans used to follow back. So the in goddess Italy. Diana in in, in ancient uh, Greece. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I she said, but I couldn't remember if she said Princess Diana, but I, I, yeah. Okay. So yeah, she was told to build that shrine, and I kind of filled it in, and she asked me where you've been, and I said, well, I was on drugs and in the mental hospital, and she just kind of paused and looked at me like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, but yeah, she said that so. she had been told that somebody was going to bring the items to her that you brought. Exactly. So where did I hear that from? I heard it from spirit, you know, the spirits that I was dealing with, the yeah, demonic wanna... and the, you know, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. And, right. and I believe that I, I moved my way up their little hierarchy on the, you know, the, the, dark, the kingdom of darkness is what I did. 
You so, you called you called these uh, messages that you were getting word thoughts. What 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 were they like? Well, it was like just all of a sudden the words were in your brain. Like um uh like you would say to me, "Hi Barb." Just the "Hi Barb" would be right there. Hmm. It wouldn't be like I would be actually hear you say "Hi" and then "Barb." It would be like "Hi Barb" would be just right there. Hmm. That makes sense. It, it's it's hard for somebody who's never experienced it to uh, to really grasp. I think because I know there are people who yeah. say that they have heard an audible voice, sometimes from God, sometimes from others. Um, I am not one of those people. Um, so, but too many people I know who are rational, productive people, mm-hmm. uh, ha- have had that experience. And so I don't deny it. I don't, I don't discount it. Um, how did you receive those at first, these word thoughts? Cause I, I know that in, in one of the episodes that you describe in chapter two, really scary mm-hmm. one, the one, uh, at the parking garage where you went up the parking yeah. garage with your, your, your son and a mm-hmm. word thought came into your mind directing you to throw him off of the parking garage. Yeah. So were all of these word thoughts scary or were some of these more, um, you know, re- no, reinforcing were, and, and giving you no. positive messages like, yeah. Hey, you're on the right path. You're special. We've got, you know, great things in store for you. Uh, what, 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 uh, what kind of direction were they giving you? Um, I guess those were just word thoughts that were coming in just like, um, oh gosh, it's hard to describe. Like it would just come in as like a, you know, um, kind of like a wave, you know, you should throw your, you know, you, you throw your son off the, the ledge of the parking garage, you know, um, I don't know that, that I was in a high intensity manic episode, psychotic episode mm-hmm. that I was like a full fledged psychotic episode to where, uh, you know, I was hearing all kinds of things. Um, but yeah, it was, I don't, I can't explain it, how it came in, you know, how that came in. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that's what they wanted me to do. I mean, it was just kind of, I knew that's what they wanted me to do. And of course I crouched down with them and held them as tight as I could and crawled back down the steps, you know, mm-hmm. cause it scared me. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I was getting, I was getting, you know how they say that, um, you know, with, uh, some are deemed, um, um, Oh boy, I'm losing the words. Um, some have the ability to hear um, when they're mental. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, schizophrenic. So I I was deemed more like bipolar with religious overtones. However, I think on some of my paperwork it was probably schizophrenia, but I was deemed um, severely mentally ill. Mm. Um Later on, after, you know, having the renewing of the mind through the word and the Lord, you know, healing me and and getting me out of all that garbage, you know, deliverance. Um, uh, then I I was not having to take my antipsychotic drugs anymore. And what I would do is fill the prescription and put them in my drawer because I didn't want the them to know I didn't want to get locked up again. Oh, but, yeah. you know, kind of eased me off that. And then um <clears throat> then when she found out I wasn't on meds anymore, I still did continue to go to the mental health clinic, but um, they did take me off the, they had paperwork that said I was no longer severely mentally ill, mm. but you know, it took, it took a while, um, <laughs> it took a while to get that, get that off my, off my record. So I would imagine, I mean, this, this went to the point, and again, you're very open and honest about this in your book that you actually lost your children for a while. I did. I did. Fortunately, praise the Lord, they all, you know, they are family members or their, you know, their dads, but. That had to be really difficult. Um, how did you, um, how did you cope with that uh, during that, uh, during that time when they weren't physically there with you? Nope, I think we lost you. Oh, are you there? 
Yeah, now now you're back. You I muted, don't know you, how that button got muted, but I looked up there and it was a red line through it. So that's okay. Okay, I can you I can edit this out. Us. No, no one no one will ever uh, no one will ever know. <laughs> okay, so when I was using meth daily, I dated a man, and he was bragging to his mom that, "Wow, mom, you know, I'm dating this woman Barbara, and she hasn't lost her kids." You know what I mean? Because when you're using meth. Eventually, you lose your apartment, your car, you're on a bicycle, um, you lose your kids. I mean, I watched it time and time again with wow. my friends throughout the five years. So he was bragging that I still had my kids. Well, when I went through that first psychotic episode and the events that happened there, of course, I was, you know, um, then was when I when I lost my kids to um, different family members, you know, to but um it was very, very, it was heart wrenching. It was very, very, very difficult. And I was ordered, uh, the first time I was in the, the downtown mental hospital, I was ordered. They thought it was all drug related. So they didn't think I was still in mania. So they released me, but they wanted me to go through a rehab. So I, I took the bus all the way down to downtown Phoenix, like Monday through Thursday, I think it was, and went to all the classes, you know, and then towards the end of it, you'll have to read about it in my book. But I I didn't complete the course, but the push was so bad to, to get out of there that, you know, I was like, I've got to just get out of here. And so I didn't complete the course. So I did not think I was going to get my kids back, but I did. Hmm. So and my son, when he turned 18, boom, he was right back with me. He moved wow. from his dad's house over, uh, right back over in with me. But, um, but yeah, I go through kind of the details and the timeline in my book of what exactly happened. But I did some crazy things, you, crazy things, stupid things. Well, you know, all of us do do some crazy things, but uh, not not all of them involve um, hearing messages from uh, the the unseen realm uh, that mm-hmm. that uh, are, are like the ones that you describe. Um, beyond the, the drugs and, and the, the doors that were open through pharmacia, mm-hmm. were the, what other things did you do that maybe open those doors even farther? Um, well, I would do meditations and go to different, um, uh, different groups. I found a meetup group for different types of like psychics and um, Reiki and all kinds of different, different groups. And so I would go to those. And I think at that point we were opening portals, um, inviting, uh, the, you know, the spirits in the upper spirits of the dark kingdom of darkness. And then I was told that I belonged to the galactic federation, you know, some say say of light, Mm -hmm. but the galactic federation, I was some type of peace, peacekeeper on that big old mothership, you know, and um, you, they start to tell you all of these things about past lives and, you know, and kind of build up your ego and you think you're, you know, you think you're, um, wow, I'm important, you know, and I think that's why a lot of people fall into it too, because they want to belong to something and they want to feel important. And uh, so I just really got sucked into it. But um, yeah, I, I belong to the Galactic Federation of Light, Derek. <laughs> I was on a spaceship with Ascended Masters, and I was an Ascended Master who came back down here. I was on my last uh, earthly life, and um, so it's this big old, you know, this big old ball of lies, you know. Uh, this this was stuff that you were told is, by uh, by various, uh, w- were these, you know, word thoughts you were getting, or were you hearing this from uh, mediums who were channeling this information? Yeah. I'm mostly from from mediums or, or psychics or mystics, um, you know, by the mystic Mary Martin I, I went to see. She told me that I was one of the children from Fan, Fanima back oh, in the day. And from been, Fatima, and, okay. I, you know, been re- yeah, been reincarnated, and but I was one of those children. And just all huh. these things, I was buried in a tomb alive with, uh, I was buried in the tomb with my goddess Isis. You know, I was alive because when she died. I was buried with her, but, you know, all our servants were buried with her or whatever. Um, just all these different stories, you know. Um, so, but at these different groups, we would do a lot of meditations. And at one particular one with Holly Matthews, they brought in the Council of Elohim. 
Oh. Well, it was probably about 300, 200 or 300 people, and I didn't know what Elohim meant. And I, she she called in the, the Council of Elohim, and my head started tingling. It would tingle, and then the top of my head, and then it stopped, and then it tingled, and then it stopped, and then it tingled. And I was like, wow, they must be opening my crown chakra, you know, and mm. And so then later on, I asked Holly, who's the Council of Elohim? And she said, I think they're angels. Well, then I heard that could be singular. Plural. Well, that kind of led me to Mike Kaiser through you. Oh. You led me to Mike Kaiser. And then I understood that I think the kingdom of darkness also mimics the hierarchy the, of what the Most High does, the Godhead, you know, um, to where they have their own Council of Elohim. But I think Mike calls it the... Well, what's in the book? What's in the the Bible? Um, divine, the Divine uh, Council, Psalm eighty two. The Divine Council. Yeah. So I just really got into Mike Kaiser's book about that because I, I mean, I was like, wow, you know, they probably were angels, but fallen angels, you know, that she called in. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we open portals. To be honest with you, you know, and it was just sad, uh, you know, thinking back now. So less of a sp- L- less of a geographic thing. In other words, you, you won't find a portal at the corner of Ninth and Main, but uh, you, <laughs> you may open a portal right where you are through what you do and what, you're, what you believe. Yeah, if you invite them in. I mean, I, w- I believe that I invite, with bringing in divination cards, the uh, Dorian Virtues, Michael cards, and, and um, Ascend the Master cards, I think that I literally invite them in. In fact, um, you know, that's what she said, there's probably a portal open in my old apartment. I know. <laughs> no, I pray not, but, yeah. um, but yeah, so there, I, there, there yeah. may be areas that are more active than others. Uh, certainly in the Bible, we see a lot of attention paid to uh, Mount Hermon, um, yes. especially if you know what you're looking for and references to Bashan in the scriptures that, uh, uh, when you understand what, uh, it was known for, th- there's a reason that that stuff's in the Bible that Jesus could very easily have said, you know, all that stuff you heard about Mount Hermon and Bashan and all of this stuff, that's all a bunch of hooey. Forget that. We don't do that anymore. No, Jesus actually went to that region to be baptized, to mm-hmm. declare his divinity at the base of Mount Hermon, the transfiguration on the summit of Mount Hermon. So yeah, there are some areas that are probably a lot more spiritually active for whatever reason, but... Um, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I read that book by Mike Kaiser. Well, I've read almost all your books, except for the last one. I haven't ordered that yet. <laughs> but yeah, I, I read that, Reversing Herman. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, it's significant, and uh, it, it's amazing how... Uh, I don't want to rabbit trail too much, but it's amazing how... Um, even a, a, even though Mike is a, was, God bless him, a, a serious mm-hmm. scholar who really didn't go beyond what you could document in the biblical text, there are still some people mm-hmm. who just refuse to hear it. It's like, no, he's a Gnostic. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm just, <laughs> you keep no. using that word. No, I don't think you know it. I, yeah. <laughs> I did pray to meet him. Remember, I, I met, you guys were at the Lubbock uh, conference, That's right, and Jud- I was able to talk to him, and and I told him, I said, I thought you were like a Mormon with all your angels. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike had a laugh at that, I'm sure. Yeah, he did. He did. He thought it was funny. So. Yeah, no, we but, had a one. I remember that conference very well. We had a great lunch. Mm-hmm. It was a wonderful group. Doug Hamp, Dr. Greg Reed, uh, Judd Burton. Um, yeah, just some really amazing stuff. And of course, Mike Heiser, God bless him, who was willing to come and hang out mm-hmm. with a bunch of weird people talking about giants. Um, you. You mentioned something. You used the word synchronicities. Um, I'm mm-hmm. curious. What do you mean by that? Um, like I would be doing something, and something else would like reiterate it. Um, I, I've got them in my book right mm-hmm. now. I'm kind of drawing a blank, but um, but like I would be talking to somebody about butterflies or something, and then like butterflies would come. Or like uh, just synchronicities, just um, one right after another with different stuff. Um, there was a my dad's name was Jack, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden um, I thought that he was. I actually thought that he. I didn't think he was saved. I thought he was actually in the realm right around us, um, the heaven right around us. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all of a sudden, 
Jackrabbit came. Um, he used to drink bud cans. That everything, everything happened to do with, you know, Jack. The word Jack, mm-hmm. uh, you know, or or my dad in particular, and uh, just one right after another. All of a sudden, all these syn- synchronicities. Um, so it was just, it was just really weird. It's like I was in another, almost in another realm, but yet still here in the in the new age. It's very. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it took a lot to get me out of it hmm. and to get me out of that and to get me in the biblical worldview. It took a lot. I mean, it took a lot. It was like pulling me out of this mindset, this oneness coexist mindset. And then, you know, I mean, being shown scriptures about your uh, point to die once and then, you know, and then judgment, um, you know, to to counteract the the reincarnation, and then you know, psychics they kind of go through family lines. So of course, this one in the spirit, this demonic in the spirit, knows what you said to your grandma. Mm. You know, back in the day in the private room, of course, you know, because that de- that demon was probably there. You know, they follow lineages mm-hmm. too. Um, so I mean, it it took a lot though, and that's why my book's called The Renewal of the Mind and Heart because. It took a lot to renew my mind and get out of that oneness uh, concept, how, that new age concept. How how hard was it to to set aside that those beliefs? I mean, considering that you'd seen so many um, incidents that that were clearly supernatural, um, how how difficult mm-hmm. was it to convince you that no, those things that you were hearing were lies and this these words in this this book um these are true i cried i cried a lot i'm like oh no not him oh no not that oh no that you mean the peace symbol is an upside down cross broken cross in a circle of witchcraft you know i mean all of these different things it's like oh my gosh i ended up going into my apartment and grabbing all of my new age books Every single New Age book, the Abraham Hicks, the Hicks books about um, Law of Attraction. I grabbed the Sylvia Brown books. I grabbed uh, Doreen Virtue's uh, cards, Ascendant Master cards, my tarot book, um, everything associated with the list that I was reading about what was um, the occult. I grabbed it all and put it in like four, three or four boxes and took it down to the church because I had a women's Bible study and I told them I used to be into that and they said that I could burn them there. So I gathered them all up. I went back to my apartment, gathered everything. I took down the peace symbol. I took down everything associated with the cult. I dropped Buddha on his head and threw him in the garbage, hmm. a glass Buddha. Um, and then I took it back down the church and they put it in a barrel and burned it in the back of the church for me. But I could have got a lot of money for that stuff. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't want anybody else to open those doors. So they burned it all for me. And, but I cried a lot because I didn't, I didn't know when I would go to the, read the books and, and, you know, um, to the library or to the, to the bookstore, it would say new age spirituality. Uh, I didn't know I was in the cult. I know that Mm. sounds funny, but I didn't know that was a cult. I had no idea. I just thought I was more spiritual than Bible thumpers, you know? Right. So, um, it was very, very, very difficult. It was, and then I, I started, you know, people started dropping off, you know, cause all of a sudden now I'm in the, the Bible and, you know, I didn't know. I mean, my nephew is the one who said, boy, Barb, you sure are spiritual, but you don't know the first thing about the Bible. Hmm. And I thought that was the Lord speaking through him to me because I don't, I'm sitting here saying it's been changed. It's been altered. It's been translated. It's you know, Nicaea, the Council of Nicaea, or whatever, I, whatever the Catholic Church can, you know, whatever. It's been messed up. Well, I had never sat down and read it, and I had never studied it. So mm-hmm. I'm like going along with all these New Agers saying it's wrong, and I don't really know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, uh, my nephew gave me the voice Bible. He said, start off with this one because it's easy reading. And then... um Anyway, I, I, the Lord ended up moving me out of the valley, away from everybody, and put me in Bible study in a non-denom- non-denominational Christian church called Faith Fellowship. And 
I mean, I went to the first time I was like trying to bring in reincarnate, trying to bring everything into the Bible. And the Lord's like, nope, not going to happen, you know. So I just over studying it, you know, for two and a half years between two different sister churches. Um, I finally got out of that new age mindset, that coexist mindset. It coexist yeah, mindset. Yeah, I struggled. The, the, it was hard. I cried a lot there <laughs> Well, yeah, because it's it's not not easy to admit that uh, everything you thought you knew was was wrong, um, and, and leading. You, I, I had a conversation like this with a, uh, a fellow in uh, Israel when we were on our tour there, and he was telling me about how he had uh, come out of a twenty years of following a guru who he thought mm. would show him the way to enlightenment, mm-hmm. and uh, finally, I mean, there was a kind of a confrontation uh, where he suddenly realized he's not going to lead me to enlightenment and and this is a very intelligent uh learned man who found it very difficult to admit that he'd been fooled for 20 years mm-hmm. by this guy who was just stringing him along and uh, taking his money um sure and i can i can relate to that i've got a, a bit of intellectual pride that i have to watch out for um I, I have a, I, you know, I have, I have a bad habit of thinking I'm I'm usually the smartest one in the room, which uh, is not true. Well, even you are. You well, sometimes you probably are. You're a brainiac. What do you, you know, call you guys? A brainiac. But yeah. <laughs> well, you're very gracious, but uh, you know, it's not even true in my own home. Okay, so you know, I, I need to be a little more cautious about uh, thinking that I'm I'm smarter than the person on the other side of the computer screen or whatever when I'm uh, engaging on social media. But uh, so I, I understood. Hard to be educated, though, Derek. I mean, you study and you research and you, you know, you. you... Well, and, and I thank you for that. And I appreciate that. But mm-hmm. uh, it can get me into trouble because there are times when I think I'm smarter than I actually <laughs> am. And that's that's not a good thing. And even if I am, it doesn't. It's not a, a way to share the hope that we have with others. You know, the the uh, yeah. I, I can tell you after 20 years in sales that um, mm-hmm. you're stupid and what you know is wrong is not a good opening line to persuading somebody over to your way of thinking. So uh, I've had to learn to kind of tone that down just a little bit. Um, but it, it can be really hard when you're on the receiving side of that, when you realize mm-hmm. that everything I thought I knew is is just t- been turned upside down. So where does that leave me? It leaves you feeling kind of... Um, well, how did it, how did it make you feel when you suddenly came to that realization that all this stuff that I've been learning from <clears throat> the likes of Doreen Virtue and mm-hmm. these mystics and and uh, mediums that I've been going to the stuff mm-hmm. that they've been telling me is 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 wrong. It's lies. I, I wanted to turn around and just call them all and saying, "Oh my gosh, you guys need to get out of this. You are opening doors for demonic. You are dealing with with demons and and you know higher entities and the." kingdom of darkness and you need i mean i was fearful for them i wanted to Mm. turn around and call i mean i i you know i bet well i was wrong i i was deceived i was completely deceived you know what i mean i i and i've heard you i've heard you say derek i've heard you say before you know what i i i was mistaken about this and you you know you're big enough person to where you i've heard you say that you know i was mistaken about this uh, and you know what i mean I personally heard you say that a couple of times. So I'm, I'm, more, I, I'm more afraid of what God's going to say when I get up to heaven and say, okay, you, you had the audacity to go in front of these people and tell and teach them as though you had authority and you were wrong here, 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 here. No, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to. He's going to be that hard on you. I know that teachers are held to a little bit more accountability. Me and my nephew were just talking about that because he's really into teaching. His reiteration was the early church fathers. Oh yeah, to help him believe Christ because he he was atheist and then Muslim and then somebody shared Jesus with him and he read uh, the Strobel book, um, yeah. Just for Christ, Lee Strobel. Yeah, and he came to faith in Christianity and in Christ through those those different you know through this man that mentored him kind of in that. Me book. too, me too. That's and, what got me. Um, oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. I didn't know that. I know that that Lee uh, that um oh uh, oh Lynn um L A L A Marzulli right right I know that he had the big but that was kind of more with the the giants and supernatural right 
Well, with me, it was a, a matter of um, I, I found myself uh, as Mr. Mom and uh, realized I couldn't teach our, our six-year-old daughter what was right and what was wrong because I didn't know why I believed what I believed. You know, the Bible's, um, the Bible's a good thing, but how do I know it's true? And that's what led me to Lee Strobel and, uh, um, oh gosh, the uh, evidence that demands a verdict. Josh McDowell, evidence, evidence that demands a verdict. But, uh, mm-hmm. so, you know, I had called myself a Christian, but I couldn't tell you why. why? And, if, and if somebody had challenged yeah. me on it, I couldn't have defended myself. So, uh, that, that's kind of was the beginning and Mike Heiser finding his work was part of, uh, part of all of that. But um, mm-hmm. that's a much more boring testimony than the one that's in your book, <laughs> Love and Renewal of the Heart well, and Mind. My nephew, my nephew actually jumped into, he took a, uh, he took a um, evangelist course at a Christian church near, near us and um, in, in Chandler, Arizona. And he went through all that, but he started getting into debates because he wanted to know what he was talking about. Right. So he was listening to D. Wallace and Bert Ehrman and and Chris Pinto and right. And he kind of turned me on to them. And I said, Well, I don't want to w- listen to Bart because it sounds like his faith is, you know, he doesn't have the faith that I want to hear. And so, but I did, I did pick up Chris Pinto's Adolium films and that was my first turning point was with him really that's when i realized somebody else knew what i came out of and he was exposing it and he was my very first he was my very first like watchman that he 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 yeah he was pivotal he was pivotal because i'm like oh my gosh somebody knows what because the people at faith fellowship and new covenant churches where i was going to bible study they didn't know what I was talking about. Mm, None right. of them had. Well, one lady had trained under the top astrologer of the U.S., and she had to make a decision between the Bible and astrology. And obviously, she was at the Bible studies. So she kind of knew. And then when I was sitting at New Covenant for the Thursday morning meeting, uh, Bible study with Sharon, um, who, by the way, does a, a really fabulous um, authority teaching that I have in my book, um, Sharon uh, we were sitting there and I was kind of given my testimony a little bit and no one, I looked around at the table and no one kind of was following me or understanding what I was saying. And I was really disappointed because I'm like, oh, gosh, Lord, they don't even know what I came out of. They have no clue what I'm talking about. And then after that, a guy came, his name was Charlie, came around the table and he kind of squatted and he said, Barbara, they don't know what you're talking about, but I do because I'm an ex-Satanist. Oh. And him and I became very good friends. He was really deep into Satanism, um, and he understood what I came out of because the New Age is a form of Satanism. Mm-hmm. It's just a, a fluffy, more deceptive one. You're not out and out saying that you're worshiping Satan, but you are. Right. You know. Um, so yeah, that was, but Chris Pinto was very pivotal. He was the very first one I heard that understood me. And then I met you guys all. Then I met all you. Well, I met, uh, I went to that first, um, Branson mansion. Oh, the true True legends Legends conference. Conference. Yeah. And I met the Hagmans and I met Steve Quayle. You know, they all knew what I was talking about. I sat and listened to them and Sheila Zelensky. I had read her book, Mm -hmm. the green gospel. And, and then I met you guys at the, hear the Watchmen conference, and I'm like, wow, there's a whole bunch of Christians, born-again Christians that understand where I was at, and they're exposing it, you know? Um, yeah. You guys are all in my book. I don't know how far you got in. I, you got I, I did see that, and you're very gracious to even mention us uh, in there, because <laughs> your journey, um, you know, I feel like if the Lord used us for any small part of, of your journey out of where you were, then praise God for that. But that's, you know, no credit due to me or Sharon. Um, it's, oh, it's all, yeah, it's all the no. Lord. Um, the, the kind of response you got at that Bible study with people just sort of looking with blank stares. I mean, again, my, my background it, when it comes to testimony is really pretty boring. Okay. Had mm-hmm. a marriage, marriage that broke apart and uh, I had to try to figure out what I believed so I could teach our daughter. I mean, that's okay. Maybe that's a good thing. But um, I I confess that I went into the Bible looking for proof texts to show why I was right and why my ex was wrong. And that's not really, (laughs) that's not the reason you read scripture. Just, okay. 
Uh, I've repented for that. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but the Lord used it. You know, He He took it in that direction uh, to to leading me toward apologetics and to what we're doing now, which is uh, just putting these puzzle pieces together to show that this this supernatural war is much bigger than most of us have been taught. But Barb, you've been on the front lines. I've kind of been back in the library, you know, during the, all of this stuff. You've been out there living it and hearing the lies and also being attacked by the the these principalities and powers, these spirits that are trying to deceive people and have deceived millions over the centuries into these mm-hmm. these false gospels. So who who do you, you have- hope? Who do you hope will will read and be blessed by your book i hope that i hope that anybody with a mental illness can understand that by studying the word of god by studying the the holy bible you can have a renewing of the mind and you can be healed you can rely on jesus to help walk you walk you through it and you can I mean, when I would get into kind of anxiety or, you know, um, feeling depressed or um, I learned to go into my prayer closet and just use him as a counselor and just, you know, talk to him. And and because he knows the root of the problem. It's not pharmaceuticals that you're going to put down your mouth that are going to relieve you of any symptoms of mental illness it's just not going to happen there's side effects with those pharmaceuticals um there's that then you have to take more to counteract those side effects i mean they tried to hand me like seven pills in one of the hospitals and i'm like what are these and they go well this one's this one this one's this one and this one's a side effect you know for side effects of this one and this one's for this one and i said no i said no i'll take the two but I'm not taking all those side effect ones. You know what I mean? So they just try and pump you full of mm-hmm. these pharmaceuticals and then you're like doing the zombie shuffle, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want people to realize that mental illness can be overcome because a lot of it, it has to do with demonic. You know, he, the Lord Jesus Christ can renew your mind. He can heal you. He can be your, your, you know, along with redemption and salvation and, you know, justification, sanctification, everything. He can also heal you completely so that you don't need any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so I want people to understand. And I'm not saying stop your pharmaceuticals right now. You know, you, you should never do that. And, you know, if you're dealing with the doctor and everything, I'm not I'm not saying that. But but once you get with him and you believe upon him and his works at the cross, you know, and uh, dying and 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 rising again for to you know save us from our sins you know and 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 actually be the doorway to the the most high connecting us you know um being our good shepherd once you realize that and truly believe in him and you're born again you know the holy spirit the eternal spirit is within you no other spirits are going to enter you they may attach but they're not going to enter you um and so, I, you know, at that point, then he can work to heal you. But so I hope that people will understand that you don't have to live with that mental illness or psychotic episodes or anything like that. They, you know, in any of the the places that I went to, like Star, Stand Together and Recover or um, any of the mental doctors, the you know, the different um, uh, clinics and stuff like that that I attended, none of them had Bible studies. Hmm. And it was kind of interesting. Some of them had Zen and uh, meditations and uh, yoga, which I don't partake in any of those. I don't think they're Christian. Um, But they they didn't have Bible studies. You know what Mm. I mean? And that's Mm. the problem. It's like they don't lead you to Christ who can take away all that demonic and all you know, all of the medicines and everything, you know, and heal you. And I'm living proof that he can do that. Mm. And so I want people to take that. Also, I want people to understand that you can look up and see what new age occult items are and get rid of them, you know, burn them, whatever, throw them away, whatever you need to do, get them out of your house because they have attachments that come along with them. And, um, and, you know, just don't use street drugs. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, that, self-medication is not a good thing. 
No. It is not I a mean, way to it, mental health and stability. Exactly. And those have really demonic spirits with them. I mean, yeah. you, get, you get demonic spirits with meth, and like I was on with coke, with uh, uh, heroin, with, um, you know, I saw... I saw so much demonic activity in the meth scene. It wasn't even funny. Hmm. People lose their morals. You, um, people stealing. I mean, I, it's just, it's really well, ugly. Well, the, the fact that you were dating ugly. the guy who, who was bragging on the fact that you hadn't lost your children because, yes. you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, that's something to be proud of. I mean, you know, that's, you sort of take that as a given if you're a parent, to, but praise God that uh, you were able to, uh, keep them through all of that well what's what's the the kind of feedback that you've been getting from the book i mean again i'm thinking of the guy charlie who came up to you you know after the bible study and said okay they don't know what you're talking about but i do um are is the book finding people like that you know the funny thing is uh, derek this is the very first interview that i've done and it's been out since last april over Mm -hmm. a year Mm -hmm. i have sent out free copies to over 100 people i have I think maybe a couple people bought it on Amazon. I just have not promoted it at all. I, the Lord's really weird with me because I have a patience problem. <laughs> so it's like, okay, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, wait. Hurry up, hurry up, wait. But I kind of got the go-ahead to to go ahead and start. I don't think it was quite time yet mm-hmm. for my book to be, but the people that I have given it to – um I think in this day and age, it's hard for people to sit down and read books. I don't know. We hear that a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, it's hard that's... for people to sit down. And what I've heard is that they're, they're, they picked it up and they're reading it, but to get back and sit down and actually start reading again has been really hard for some people. But the people who have read it all the way through or um, have think it's fantastic, and they've learned a lot. So the whole second half is basically – like a one-on-one Bible course, like explaining to people that the Gospels are actually about Jesus Christ being the door. You know, everything was created through him, so through him you have to go back. Um, He also covers us, you know, so that the Most High doesn't see our sin, you know, um, the works of the cross, you know. Um, So I go into like a one-on-one because that's how I was taught when I was pulled out of the New Age, was just like a one-on-one layman's term Mm -hmm. Bible course, you know, and and seeing the bigger picture of how it works, you know, um, what he actually did for us, um, you know, and their plan, their salvation plan, the Godhead. And I, yeah, I don't use Trinity in my book. I use Godhead, so... um, well, I think a, a lot of us uh, Christians in in the United States, especially, have to first be uh, awakened to the reality that the spirit realm is real. Most American Christians, even though they claim to believe in a God, an invisible God who spoke the universe into existence, and uh, Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, in other words, God with us, God in the flesh, who literally rose from the dead on the third day, mm-hmm. uh, just have real trouble believing that, uh, yeah, that means that all of this other stuff that's in the Bible about uh, demons and gods and, you know, dragons and giants and all the other weird stuff, uh, Jesus kind of testified that that stuff was real. And there's nothing in the scriptures that suggest that all that demonic activity that was um, a major focus of Jesus' ministry ended when the apostles left Mm -hmm. the scene at the end of the first century. So uh, we American Christians are more open to believing in things like extraterrestrials than we are in, and I see that you deal with that uh, to, a, to a degree here mm-hmm. in, in your book as well, uh, that, then, and then we are the demonic realm. And that is, exactly. really, that is really tragic because it means that there are people who we know who would benefit from um, the fact that, as L.A. Marzulli calls it, we've got access to the guidebook to the supernatural, the Bible. Mm-hmm. And yet most of and, us don't know what to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I like that book, The Supernatural. I think that was Mike Kaiser's, right? Uh, well, The Supernatural Worldview. The supernatural. Oh, that was uh, Chris Putnam, actually, The Supernatural Worldview. Oh, okay. Chris Putnam. Yeah, that was the very first books I bought from Skywatch TV. It was Chris and Tom Horn's right. um, books. Those were the very first one, and I was so bummed because I gave them to a secondhand store. And I was like, what? And I was like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> but somebody probably needed it more than I needed it. But, 
Yeah, that's that's just it. It's like especially and in the new age, it was weird because they believe in demons in the new age and they believe in God, you right. know, which God who knows, but but um demons, but yet they don't believe in any leader of the demons or anything like that. And I'm like, I don't understand that part of it. And then yeah. when you get into the Bible, you know, I took my son, Charlie, I think he was eight at the time or nine. I took him to a Bible study and this this uh, youth pastor was just phenomenal with the kids. And I went to go pick him up from there and he said, he said, wow, mom, the Bible is such a great action book. <laughs> <laughs> they yes. were in where the prison doors were thrown open, you know, and acts. And and I was like, yeah, you know what it is, but people don't see it as yeah, that, yeah. you know. They that, don't see the supernatural. They don't, you know. And that is tragic yeah. because it's like the Lord of the Rings on steroids and even yeah. more so because it's actually real. Uh, the book is uh, Love and Renewal of the Heart and Mind. Barbara Joan Briggs is the author. And uh, check the show notes below this program, whether you're watching or listening, and there'll be a link where you can get a copy of the book, especially if you or someone you know is in the New Age movement or is struggling with uh, demonic oppression or, you know, some people don't recognize it as such, just may think it's depression. Um, mm -hmm. This this may offer some uh, help and some hope because, uh, look, if you can come back from doing meth on a daily basis and uh, to a sound mind and being a productive, loving parent um then then god can god can rescue you as well wherever you are and uh, that that is what i think is so um uplifting about your story and, and again having met you barb I, you're you're hilarious to be around great company <laughs> would never have guessed in a million years until i started reading through the book that wow she has lived some stuff and um, I really appreciate you taking time out to, Ew. first of all, to write the book and share that to, to help people, but then taking time out to uh, talk with us about it tonight. Yeah, Derek, thank you so much for having me on your show. I, Sorry about before, we kind of were going to do this earlier, and it just wasn't the timing I don't think was correct. So so anyway, I appreciate you having me on the show and give sharing a hug for me. And yeah, Lila, boy, I miss her. You remember Lila? Yes. I just got to give a shout out to her, my friend from Norway, my bestie. I just love her. She came out three years in a row for mm -hmm. the True Legends conferences. And yeah, so we still FaceTime and chat and and text and stuff. So, yes. But um, but yeah, we had we had a lot of fun with you guys well, over there at the True Legends conference. Well, God bless sure. you, sister. We look forward to seeing you again sooner rather than later. <laughs> okay, Derek. Thank you. There'll be a link in the show notes below this podcast. Uh, program, whether you're watching or listening, as where you can get a copy of Barbara Joan Briggs' book, Love and Renewal of the Heart and Mind. That's what the cover looks like, and uh, I recommend it, especially if you or someone you know is really struggling with um, the New Age and perhaps encounters with spirits who are trying to convince that person that they are special. Well, they will right up to the moment that they drag you off to, uh, right off to the pit. Um, well, uh, we uh, have entered a period of history where absolutely anything that threatens the psyche of the precious little snowflake flowers who uh, control social media and the arts uh, must be attached with a trigger warning. Yes, the hills are alive with the sound of trigger warnings. Talk about that straight ahead bless their pointy little heads next on a view from the bunker hey guess what month it is and that's why maybe we're wearing red white and blue it's july it's july which means not only that you know the united states celebrates independence day but also anniversary of something oh, big. Oh, yes. The 1947 Roswell crash, which occurred over 4th of July weekend. It did. In yeah. fact, in 2017, you and I and Josh Peck all went to Roswell to see exactly what happened and get some expert interviews. And then you wrote a book. Yes. Josh and I wrote the book, The Day the Earth Stands Still, about the phenomenon. Because... 
For many people, the UFO phenomenon is not about figuring out how we can travel to the stars. It is really a religion, and answering the big questions of life. Why are we here? Exactly. Where do we come from? What happens when we die? And it is back in the news. So that is the main reason we've decided to bring back a special from last summer. If you get this book, and you will get these two practically free yes. because the whole package you're going to save $30. Yes. It's only $35 for all three. You get the book, the two Sci Friday crazy uh, you know. best of deals is 14 hours of video oh, yeah. on the uh, between the two uh, best of Sci Friday and we do address the UFO phenomenon on some mm -hmm. of these episodes. $35 plus shipping and handling available now only at our store online gilberthouse.org/store. Driving the internet to think every Sunday night from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks. This is A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. You'll find us online at vftb.net. You'll also find us at gilberthouse.org. That is our main website. And I will say again, uh, oh, yes, very quickly, the social media sites, Twitter at View from Bunker or at Derek Gilbert, Facebook View from the Bunker, and the new social media sites, Truth Social, Gab Me, We Get Her at Derek P. Gilbert. And yeah, we're, we're trying out threads, too. That's the new facebook twitter clone at derek gilbert there as well uh, again if you're subscribing and listening or watching on youtube please take a moment and download our app even if you're not watching on youtube download our app anyway go to gilberthouse.org slash app and uh, join the community there as we bypass the gatekeepers of big tech the company that hosts the app develops the app hosts the content there is a christian company and so not likely to cancel us in fact there's probably a day coming here in the next month or two where we just take a view from the bunker off of youtube altogether or at least don't post any new programs because um we may be talking about some things here in the next couple of months that um are the kind of thing that got uh, friends of ours sister ministries yanked so uh just make sure that we don't lose touch uh, by downloading our app gilberthouse.org slash app uh, in england there is a theater group that is putting together a revival producing a revival of the um, classic musical sound of music this is at the chichester festival theater and um, if you're familiar with the program i mean if you're familiar with the uh, the production rather this was a uh, musical that was produced in the late 1950s features a score by rogers and hammerstein two of the greatest songwriters in american history anyway especially for the broadway stage it was made into a major motion picture in 1965 and it tells the story of maria who is a novice nun sent to be the governess of a family the von trapp family in austria shortly before world war ii the von trapps um, the patriarch of the family in the film played by christopher Plummer, in the movie played by julie andrews uh maria played by julie andrews not uh, captain von trapp um he was a uh, retired retired navy officer and um they eventually marry they eventually marry and then when uh hitler comes to power and the nazis take over austria because of his uh, objection to what the Nazis are about, they flee overland. They basically have to hike from Austria into Switzerland, which, oddly enough, kind of uh, reverses a journey that my distant ancestors made back in the late 17th century, walking from Switzerland through Austria to, uh, to Germany, ultimately. Anyway, the, um, the attendees at this uh, Chichester Festival, where this revival is opened, uh, opened last week, they... Um, have been informed by a warning that uh, the musical touches on Nazi Germany in the annexation of Austria, and thus may find certain themes distressing. They're putting a trigger warning on the sound of music because it mentions Nazis, and people might find that upsetting. I mean, um, look, this... This is really silly. Uh, it may actually frighten some people not familiar with the plot or the music away from attending the show and learning a little something. Because again, this is based on a true story. The Von Trapps, real people, Maria, real person, Captain Von... They, they really went through this. That was dramatized and turned into a musical and a film. But th this basically really happened. 
but we can't let the snowflakes see it because it might distress them. They might find certain themes distressing. The Nazis are kind of central to the plot here. And, you know, spoiler, in case you have not seen the film or the musical, the Nazis are not the good guys. And yet we have reached a point in our devolution (laughs) that the sound of music has now got a trigger warning attached. Now, the theater says, no, no, we, we don't put trigger warnings on our productions. This is not a trigger warning. It, it's a trigger warning. And so to the uh, producers of the Chichester Theater Festival, we say bless your pointy little heads. Well, just a couple of weeks from now, we will be in uh, the Dayton, Ohio area. In fact, uh, this coming weekend, as you're uh, seeing this, the third weekend in July, we will be in Brookville, Ohio, the 28th and 29th. This is uh, the, the Go Therefore Conference. Dr. Mike and Kathy Spaulding putting this together with the help of Pastor Neil Peterson and his congregation at the Harvest Revival Center in Brookville. This will be a great event. If you can make it, wonderful. Uh, L.A. Marzulli, uh, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, Coach Dave Daubenmeyer, Pastor Casper McLeod, David Hevner, Dr. Greg Reed, um, Vicki Joy Anderson, Tom Dunn. You want to talk spiritual warriors? They will be there in force. Kenny C., Randy Conway, uh, David Paxton, Nathan Branham. If you cannot be there, you still have time to sign up for streaming video. So take advantage of this. This should be a uh, just an amazing gathering. Um, It's a wonderful facility with a huge display, which I'm going to put to good use because I'm bringing some drone video, thanks to our friend Aaron Lipkin, that will show some megalithic sites in Israel that nobody knows about except for the archaeologists. And we will connect them to the Bible. So some fascinating stuff at the Go There For Conference online, gothereforeconference.com. And speaking of Aaron Lipkin, if you're catching this before Tuesday, July 25th, and you're in the Ozarks, we will be at Morningside for a recording session of the Jim Baker Show on Tuesday, July 25th. Aaron Lipkin will be with us. We put in a good word, and uh, they found what Aaron is doing just fascinating. So he'll have an opportunity to talk about archaeology in the Holy Land, his role in helping to um, find the lead curse tablet at the site of the altar of Joshua, proving that there were Hebrew speakers in the land and a written Hebrew language centuries before the experts thought they were in the land. So this will be a fascinating discussion. We look forward to it. Aaron's a lot of fun. And uh, if you're, again, if you're in the Ozarks, it's open to the public and free. We've got information at our website. You'll find it at gilberthouse.org. Uh, look at the right-hand column or go to our app. We've got the calendar there, and it's got a little map thing in there. When you tap on it, it'll show you how to get there. And uh, uh, it's uh, really, really quite cool. The developers of that app, five stars. So that's what we got coming up in just the next couple of weeks. Saturday, September or October 28th. I'll be in Valley City, North Dakota for a small gathering called the Pitchfork and Ho Gathering. Mark your calendar for that, and I'll have more details on that in the uh, weeks ahead. And, of course, our Israel tour next spring. Not too early to plan for that. March 31st through April 9th with an optional three-day extension to Jordan. And, oh, yes, our special guest is Timothy Alberino. This will be an adventure through the Holy Land, like a rolling conference. And uh, we hope you can join us because our tours, thanks to Aaron Lipkin, goes places that other tours just do not. So join us for that. You can find out more at gilbertsinisrael.com. Gilbertsinisrael.com. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch or listen wherever that may be. And if you get a spare moment to leave us a review at, uh, for example, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, wherever else you find us, which is, uh, of course, wherever fine podcasts are sold, uh, We would appreciate that. Our announcer is the inimitable DC Good. And a view from the bunkers of production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, not commercial, no derivatives, 4.0, international license. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is a view from the bunker.